All right, good afternoon. Um, just to recap uh, the past weekend, certainly, um, you know, great to get back home uh, in Tiger Stadium for me for the first time and for our team. Obviously, getting off to a fast start was, was absolutely crucial uh, given the way that, um, you know, we kind of were sluggish. And uh, I love the way our guys responded on the first, uh, first play, um, you know, getting the ball loose on special teams. And, and then, uh, you know, continuing uh, with, you know, one of the best, if not the best, uh, first quarter uh, outputs uh, in Tiger Stadium. Um, Daniels uh, has been really efficient. I think he's led scoring drives in eight consecutive uh, possessions. Um, defensively, um, played really well uh, through three quarters. Uh, thought maybe, you know, our attention to detail lapsed a little bit late. Um, and then special teams was, was outstanding with a block punt. Um, certainly uh, did the things uh, necessary in, in that area that we needed to tighten up as well. So a good victory. But now, you know, we get into SEC competition and, and everything is heightened. Um, uh, all of the things that I just mentioned uh, still have to occur, uh, but our preparation has to be even better, um, more detailed. Um, playing Mississippi State, I have such great mis respect for, uh, for Coach Leach. And, and, you know, obviously it starts with the offense. Um, it is a precision offense. It is extremely well coached. Um, and, you know, there is a level of, uh, I would say, uh, patience and persistence uh, that you need on defense. Uh, because if you're trying to... Uh, disrupt it in, in one fashion, uh, there are answers uh, that they have. Um, and the answers are tried and true and tested. So, look, this is going to come down to our guys' attention to detail. Um, they're going to have to tackle very, very well. Um, this, this really puts the tenets of really good defensive football on display. Um, you've got to be able to um, – not only tackle, but, um, you know, be in really good positional uh, awareness uh, all day. Uh, because, again, th this is a scheme that um, in some instances, and I'm, I'm not here to compare it, you know, uh, across the board, but this is like triple option, right? <laughs> you know, the precision of the scheme, the way it is set up, um, if, if you are not... Um, taking care of your assignment and doing your job, um, you're going to get exposed. And they've had two quality wins against quality opponents. And, um, you know, again, it's SEC competition against an uh, outstanding offensive scheme. And defensively, this is a veteran defense. Um, they've got a lot of juniors and seniors playing a 3-3-5 defense. Um, they're salty. I mean, they've got some really good players. Uh, they play hard. Um, they're they're well coached, well coordinated. Um, they've got answers as well. Um, again, uh, you know, in terms of you know superlatives, um, just going back to the offense. Will Rogers, you know, obviously leads the SEC in passing yards, but it's a high percentage offense, and um, he can he can make all the throws. Um, you know, I think from a defensive standpoint, uh, the guy that stands out is is Tyrus Wheat. You know, obviously from uh, right here in Louisiana, um, he's all over the field. He's from Amite, and I I will say this: you're going to see him in a number of different positions. Whether he's at linebacker, he can play a stand up. He's he's going to be moved around, uh, and obviously he's coming you know back home, and and uh, he is a. Uh, He's a guy that can wreck your day if you don't know where he is. So um, great challenge for our football team, one where we have to step up our play. It's exciting now that we get into SEC competition in terms of now we have to challenge ourselves and our preparation and, um, you know, get ready for uh, a really quality opponent. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Coach, uh, Josh Sibley, one team, one pod. Um, 
How much does it mean for the offense getting John, John Emery back this week, not only for the rushing uh, game, but also for the passing game and helping out uh, Jaden with the pa pass blocking? Yeah, we're excited about getting John back, certainly, and, and I'm excited for him. Um, you know, it's been a long run for John in terms of getting a chance to, um, you know, get out and, and, and play for LSU. Um, he's worked hard to get back into this position. Um, and now he gets an opportunity. Now let's let's be careful. Now he's he's been off for a while, um, so um, you know to put a lot of expectations on him in the first game, we certainly can't do that. You know we've got other backs that have done really well, uh, but he will be part of the mix. And make no mistake about it, we've seen his capabilities in camp. Uh, we've kept him active within our rotation, so uh, he's ready to play. Uh, and we did that with. You know, obviously, our, our mind eyes toward the SEC competition coming up, so we're excited to get him back. Hey, Coach, when you're going up against their offense, how much does conditioning and substitutions play a role when they could throw it 50, 60 times? Yeah, certainly that's part of it. Uh, the, the tempo will be, um, you know, part of what we're have, you know, we have to consider. You know, but you're you're in a situation where. You know, you're in nickel and dime a lot as well. So, um, and it is a, a, a hurry up offense, but it's not something that we can't situational substitute out. Um, and, and again, I think we're kind of used to it a little bit in terms of these guys are in pretty good shape. So we feel confident there. This is really going to be about getting the right players on the field. And, and we may look a little bit different from that perspective in terms of, you know, getting guys that can play in space. Uh, Brody Miller with The Athletic. First, just want to check, is B.J. Ojolari going to be available this week? We expect him to be available, based upon my conversations with our doctors yesterday. Thank you. And then, you know, you've talked about Jaden Daniels kind of working on evaluating fronts, things like that. What challenge does the three three five kind of possibly present for him? Yeah, it's, it's really about, you know, how the – and, again, I'm just using words here, so don't take it too – uh, literal, but how the, the birds line up, right? I mean, it's a 3-3-5 defense, but they can move people around. So it's it's recognition of where those overloads come from and where those pressures, how you slide the front, how do we recognize, you know, who are the five to block in the run game. And, and the 3-3-5 presents some of those problems. And, you know, we'll have to do a great job of, of making it a little bit simpler. Um, you know, we think that a tight end helps in this situation where you can pick up an extra blocker in those situations to clean some things up. But um, I've gone against the 3-3-5 on many occasions, and it does present some unique challenges. It's very good against, you know, a, a, a spread offense. Sometimes you, you look to do some other things against it as well. Coach, uh, two questions about the quarterbacks. What did Jaden Daniels do so well after looking at the tape? Uh, moving the offense, command, whatever. And then just with Garrett Nussmeyer, what are your thoughts and wants moving forward with him? Well, I think you start with efficiency with, with Daniels. Um, his ability to keep eight drives alive consecutively and turn them into touchdowns, I think that's a great place to start. So, um, you know, I think, you know, there's still growth there, and he would tell you that if he was standing here. There's, there's still growth and recognition. Um, but he's so coachable. Um, I think I mentioned this the last time we talked about him, is his demeanor uh, when he comes to the sideline, extremely coachable, uh, taking in information, uh, talking to the box, talking to me on the sideline where you can get him information and you can pick that up and, and move on to the next series. So I like that uh, about him. Um, look, here's a guy with three years of starting experience, and you can sense and feel that when he comes to the sideline that you can have that kind of dialogue. Um, Look, I think we've all seen his ability to throw it um, and, and run, and he was confronted with opportunities on Saturday where he could have taken off, but, for example, the touchdown to Besh, right, where he gets to the line of scrimmage and finds an open receiver and lets the ball go. If we can continue to see that, um, he, he becomes very difficult to, to contain. I'm sorry, yes. So, you know, <laughs> look, you never want to have a moment where you, you turn the ball over. Um, and, and obviously, we had a conversation with that. Um, he's got to take care of the football, and he knows that. I mean, that's not anything that's um, something that he, he feels good about. But um, he did some really good things, and, and we have to build off of that. And uh, I think he is somebody that when, you, when you're in that 
number two position, and I'm not here to make excuses for him, you press a little bit, right? You want to, you know, you have another quarterback who's led eight consecutive touchdown drives. You're trying to press. You want to get on the field, and, and he doesn't need to do that. We have great confidence in him. He just needs to let the game come to him. Right in the middle. Matt Moscona, ESPN yeah. Baton Rouge. Yeah, uh, you mentioned great respect for Mike Leach. As best I can tell, I don't think you have ever coached against him as a head coach. I have not. Do you do you have a personal relationship there at all? One and then I've also... known him for quite some time. Uh, obviously, the the tree that that he's in um, have many many acquaintances. I, I know him since the days that I was at Grand Valley State and he was at Iowa Wesleyan. You know, we we shared a lot of uh, common. Um, acquaintances in the business itself so um, we've uh, we've gotten a chance to to know quite a bit about um, the offensive structures and uh, look there's a lot of concepts that he's run um, that I was running about 25 years ago as well so um, we we have obviously run into each other many times along our careers if I could ask one follow-up also uh, this is kind of your first time through the league yeah. so What's it like for you trying to prep for maybe coaches and players and and philosophies that you're learning for the first time? Um, you know, um, you know, the previous job I had, it was an independent schedule. So, you know, it was somebody new each week in a sense, right? We had so many, we had non-conference games every week. So it just feels normal, like, all right, this is a new opponent. But I was so used to having new opponents on the schedule. So it doesn't feel that much different for me in terms of the preparation. Um, we have advanced scouting. Our advanced scouting does a really good job of coming up with, you know, their personnel and, and their tendencies. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, how we're going to attack, you know, offensively and defensively. But um, it doesn't feel foreign to me from that perspective. Coach Ed Daniels from New Orleans. Um, as you try to build a program here, mm -hmm. if you're able to win a game like this against a, a really good team on Saturday, mm -hmm. Does it send the, the confidence and believability me, meter up? Does that kind of accelerate the process if you're able to get something like that done on Saturday? Um, you know, every you know every game that they play, our guys, um, is, is going to be an opportunity for growth. Uh, and you want that growth to happen through success because success obviously breeds confidence. And confidence then is an accelerator in, in what you're doing, right? Everybody can move forward. Uh, everybody tends to question themselves uh, if, if the outcomes aren't right. So yes to your question, but um, we're not going into the game, you know, looking at it from that perspective. Really, I'm going into this game with the challenge of how we prepare differently this week um, with uh, such a – we have to have a better week of preparation than we did last week because the competition is keener and better. We have to get our guys to elevate that preparation level. That's what I'll be looking for. And if we get that, um, we'll play much better, and the outcome will probably be where we need it to be. Uh, yeah, Brian, right here. Uh, have you played at any of the, uh, any other stops in offense against an offense like this so predicated on – throwing on almost every down and, and where they spread the field and throw the backs and throw to everybody. Yes, I've had offensives that are quite similar. I would say Syracuse, um, you know, is, is very similar um, and, and runs almost the same offensive structure. Um, and uh, Dino Babers is the head coach who was part of that tree and ha have had to defend it, um, you know, on a couple occasions. It's a difficult – um, system and, and look this requires um, your offense uh, to be really good as well your offense and defense have to be linked together in games like this your offense can't be just chucking it downfield and three and out you have to maximize your possessions you've got to be able to make sure that you're not giving them extra possessions so the linkage between your offense and defense is absolutely paramount when you're playing teams like this Hey, Brian Wilson, I'm here from The Advocate. You talked recently about wanting, uh, really focusing on success rate in the run game. Is that kind of where you want it, or what sort of things do you all need to do to get to the place where you want to be sort of checking off the right things in terms of success rate in the run game? 
Yeah, we still we still are uh, focused much more on success rate than than anything else. And you know, the the picture is not really clear yet in terms of where we are. We we need SEC competition to really get into you know what our success rate is um, in terms of the competition. Um, so I think that's you know, TBD for us right now. But our focus will be on success rate, third down percentages and, and picking up them, as well as yards per carry uh, per attempt. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I think it's probably too early to, to make those decisions. Getting Emery back, a back of, of his caliber, I think helps in that assessment as well. So um, I want to answer your question, but I think it's a little early for us to really feel like where are we and how far do we need to go. You spoke at length of, about this after the game with Charles Turner starting at center and then you had moved Miles Frazier over to right tackle. Is that the same lineup you're going to come out with this week on the offensive line? And is it early enough in the season that you feel comfortable to just kind of change things up a little bit? Um, we were pleased um, with, with that starting five. I think you can expect to see that um, moving forward. I think there's some some guys that I think distinguish themselves. Uh, the true freshman, Emory Jones, um, played well. I think you'll see more of him uh, in the rotation. Um, but I, I, I feel pretty confident to, to tell you here today that the way it graded out was what we were hoping for. And they're still going to need be a need to rotate guys in. Cam Wire is still going to have to play for us. Traymond Schwartz is still going to have to play for us. There's still going to have to be rotations within this group. It's not five for the whole game. But I just think you add uh, Emory now. He did some really good things on Saturday. Hey, Coach. Uh, Glenn West with Go247. Um, a little bit of a two-parter for you. Just uh, Do you guys expect to have seven banks available this weekend? And then also... Just this is a big test for the cornerback and secondary group as a whole. Just what do you hope to see from that group this weekend? Yeah, good question on seven. Seven um, is close to being ready. We wanted to make sure that, um, look, I mean, he wanted to play in the opener, uh, but um, our medical team wanted to make sure that he was 100%. He was probably 90%. And – there was really no need. We feel like we're in pretty good shape. This is a game where, um, you know, all hands on deck at that position. So the expectation is right now um, that um, he's going to be dressed out, and uh, we're going to know here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, how that eventually puts him in the rotation. Um, so you're, you're right on. He's at the cusp of playing. And we'll see how we practice this week. Hey, Coach, when you face a team like Mississippi State and they have so many curveballs, does that sort of uh, make you have to sort of adjust the way you practice this week? Are there any sort of adjustments made on that end? Or is it just you know practice try, try to practice more normally and uh, make the adjustments just more schematically instead of actual um, game day practice? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think perceptually that, that – People think that there's a lot of curveballs, but this is this is um, dive, QB, keep, or pitch. There's maybe four or five, six concepts that are run so well and so efficiently that if you get too cute on defense, that's where you get exposed. Or you try to do one thing to take it away. If you play too much man, if you play too much three-man rush, if you try to be one-dimensional defensively, that's where you get in trouble. So this is really about trying to change up your looks, try to make it so they don't see the same thing every time. Um, but they're going to run what they run, and they just run it better than you can defend it in three days of preparation. And again, I go back to that. I, I know you're going to get sick of the option, triple option analogy, but it's so true in that this is the air raid concept. They run it better than you can defend it in three days. So. You better tackle. Um, you better have a, a really good plan on some of the things that they really like to do, or you're going to get exposed. Uh, what is your assessment of how the coaches and players communicated with each other after their first game to make the corrections and the adjustments and the personnel changes that went into this second game plan? Where are you seeing that? 
That's a really good question. I, you know, the game, a game like Southern where it's 51 to nothing at half, those are nightmares for me because, you know, you're down to, you know, you're playing as many guys as possible and you're always looking out on the field doing this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right, we got 11. Uh, because you've got new guys going in and out of the game. We did not have any uh, substitution errors and, and I was really happy with the discipline that our guys showed and, you know, actually in Florida State, we had a couple of guys tap out of special teams without communicating, which is totally unacceptable. So, you know, we had addressed that in week one and, and um, it carried over. So communication is much better. We got to clean up a couple of things on the sideline in terms of guys getting down and, and, and sitting down there watching the game a little bit too much. Uh, but I think we're getting better to where I want to be a little bit more disciplined on the sideline. But it was really good for uh, where we were in that game. Coach in the middle. Uh, Gregory Clayton got a shot at punt returner. Yep. Um, would you maybe just kind of share a little bit of his story and how he came here, the relationship there, and is that the plan moving forward with him returning punts? Well, obviously, you know, Frank Wilson had a lot to do with that. And, you know, it was a UTSA transfer, um, you know, um, from from Louisiana, obviously. Um, and, and here's a young man that, uh, you know, obviously we had a sense that, that he's a guy that could – really come in here and, and have a chance to earn a scholarship. Um, and uh, he finds himself in week two returning punts. He's a pretty good receiver as well. So we knew we had a, a really good player coming in, but he's he's entering into a field of wide receivers where there's great depth. We saw that, right, the other night. Um, but again, I think another um, young man from the state of Louisiana that um, – you know, we've seen a lot of this. We're going to play against one. There's so many really good players in this state. Um, I'm just glad we were aware of him as a transfer and that he's able to help our program. Hey, Coach. Chase Luzerne from Grand Island Football. I know Allie Gay and B. Joe Zawari were absent in last week's game, but it allows you an opportunity to see Savion Jones, mm -hmm. Justin Little, mm -hmm. and even put Harold Perkins a lot in yep. that role. What is your evaluation on how those guys played? You know, Savion was, was uh, what he's been. Uh, I think I talked about this after the game, consistent. Um, he is uh, really, from a uh, job assignment, um, as good as, as we have, uh, doing his job, playing and play out. Um, you know, Des hadn't played a lot, so it was good to get him out there. There's things that he's got to clean up in his game, but he's active. Um, he's athletic and, and, and gives us that piece. Um, and, and look, you're, you're looking to develop uh, guys that haven't played a lot of football. He hasn't played a lot of football, so it was good to get him out there. And, and Harold Perkins, you know, was playing in our, our nickel package and um, quite frankly, uh, you know, didn't have much time to get ready for that role. But he's such a great kid, accepted it, and uh, used his athleticism um, to, to really help us when we were pinched for, you know, personnel at that position. Down here to the left, Brian Holland with uh, NBC 33 and Fox 44. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> if you found something with tempo at the end of Florida State and then Mississippi State is obviously challenging because they're making you play complimentary football in the second half, one, is that just a second half call as far as slowing things down? And two, from experience, how do you kind of balance that? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think tactically you have to look at, you know, uh, efficiency over – uh, anything else. So um, if we're efficient on offense, um, we're fine playing with tempo. Um, if we're not, um, it, it, it's, it's really, you know, immaterial. Because if you're not efficient in what you do, you're giving them, you know, easy possession. So we have to look at our efficiency on offense. And I think it's not just tempo. It's, it's everything that we do. Um, and, and you'll see a blend again. You're not just going to see a hurry-up offense go out there. You're going to see tempo. You'll see us move the tight end around, change formations, do some things like that. But it'll be a blend with an eye towards being efficient offensively. And when I say efficient, obviously, holding on the football and cashing those in. We talked about the eight drives that, that Daniels has had as eight consecutive drives. Um, if we can get near near that, we'll be in pretty good shape. Michael Basketball said after the game he was originally going to have to miss the first two games, and then he got cleared like the Thursday before Florida State. 
How did that affect the way y'all were preparing for the season? And then now that you're past that two-game mark, what's his role going to kind of look like moving forward? Well, we we, we appealed um, that that uh, suspension, and as you know, he was cleared uh, to play. So um, you know, we got him uh, actively involved right away, um, and and he was a guy also that you know, like John, we kept with us, you know, hoping that, that we would get good news and, and that we would be able to play him. So um, we kept him active with us. And, you know, he's got a unique skill set. He is really good in pass coverage. He's really smart. Um, that doesn't mean he can't stop the run. Um, he's not built to be a big-time plugger, but he'll stick his nose in there. He's, he's not afraid. We saw that. His – his block punt was like teach tape. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, he bent, put the low hand out, took the ball off the foot of the punter. Some younger players would have run into the punter in that situation. So he's, he's a smart, savvy football player and makes us better when he's on the field. Hey, Brian. Uh, Sheldon Mickles, the advocate. Um, I know Saturday night was a small sample size, but uh, how has your secondary, the assessment, of your secondary going into this big challenge uh, Saturday night? I think the corners have held up pretty well. Um, their play has been consistent. It's been on body. Um, they've played the ball well in the air. Um, you know, I thought our tackling got better. Greg Brooks playing back at the safety position uh, has enhanced our communication um, to the level that we felt really good about it. Um, you know, uh, you know, putting Ward down, you know, in a natural nickel position fits his game as well. So I just think the pieces were, were moved in the right place after that evaluation um, of Florida State and where we felt like we needed to, to get better. So communication on the back end was much better. The corner play continues to be solid, um, but they'll be challenged at a higher level certainly this Saturday.